Let's go now, Jerome's taking a look at the Bears offensive line. Now, it's really easy to get bogged down with the Vikings offensive line. And, of course, uh, there are some issues, but things are trending in the right direction at least. Uh, it, it is easy to be myopic, but looking at how the other half lives. Uh, so the Bears offensive line, it's bad and they're injured. So pending Cody Whitehair, who's on the COVID reserve list, uh, their center, uh, they're down three opening day starters, which is less than ideal. So James Daniels, uh, the guard, Torres Peck uh, in October, as well as right tackle Bobby Massey uh, tore up his knee a couple weeks ago so he's on IR as well so they have a lot of young players uh, and a lot of moving parts on that offensive line so it's understandable why they've struggled mightily uh, the last couple weeks so TBD there Uh, but the Vikings uh, defensive line as well as the linebackers should be able to bring some heat and get some pressure on Nick Foles as well shut down the running game especially if Derrick Henry I'm watching sorry I'm watching the Thursday night game right now Uh, as long as uh, David Montgomery uh, is in the concussion protocol. He may not play on Monday night. So uh, their offensive line coach is Juan Castillo. Now Juan is a longtime Andy Reid uh, assistant. Also, he was randomly his defensive coordinator for a year, you know, uh, but also he was Kubiak's offensive line coach in Baltimore for one season. So a lot of West Coast uh, concepts, a lot of zone blocking concepts as well up front. Uh, assistant offensive line coach Donovan Rayola, a younger brother of Dominic Rayola, who – you know, uh, yeah, long time line center. Great guy. Right. Uh, so with the Bears, like they are big up front. They are a bunch of big dudes up front that primarily run uh, man gap concepts and they just like to get after it. But they just have not been able to, uh, as well as their PFF's number 31 graded offensive line and pass blocking uh, at 53.0. Uh, they combined to allow 137 total pressures and 17 sacks this season. And that was with people healthy earlier in the year. So it's less than ideal. Uh, and like we said, with white hair on COVID and also Jason Spriggs uh, and uh, Sam Mustif- Mustifer, nailed it. Uh, they're missing practice with knee injuries. Uh, they only had five healthy offensive linemen who were on the active roster, right? So not including practice squad guys. So, oh boy. Oh boy. So uh, going through left tackle, Charles Leno, who is the rock of Gibraltar in this offensive line group. So uh, 29 years old, 6'3", 306, and remember, he's always the one when you have shorter tackle prospects because he's 6'3", he's the shortest tackle in the NFL besides Isaiah Wynn uh, with the Patriots, who's 6'2". Um, random aside, but uh, coming out of Boise State, 2014 seventh-round pick. This year, he's allowed 30 pressures, two sacks. Also, last year against the Vikings in, in two combined games, he allowed nine pressures and a sack in Week 17. Now, I believe the sack in Week 17 was a strip sack by Afadi. Uh, so hopefully 95's got that filed away in the dossier. Andre Patterson as well. Uh, lots of experience against Charles Leno there. Uh, left guard. So uh, I, I'm basing this depth chart off of their starting lineup against the Titans in Week 9. Uh, and also this could be uh, what is rolled out against the Vikings. So 71, Arlington Hambre, uh, 6'5", 300, 2020 uh, seventh-round pick co- coming out of Colorado. First career start was last week against the Titans. Uh, he allowed three pressures and a penalty, recorded a 47.5 PFF grade, uh, as well as 27.6 uh, blocking grade. So they threw a lot of Jeffrey Simmons at him. It was not a great day. Now, if Cody Whitehair does get back, uh, I think what will happen is that uh, Hambright will go back to the bench. I think they'll move Alex Bars, uh, the second-year man, who we'll talk about next, uh, back over to left guard. But Alex Bars uh, is the center. Uh, six, uh, number sixty-four. He's six foot six, three twelve, twenty-five years young. Yeah, massive dude. Absolutely massive. At uh, he's coming out of Notre Dame. Is twenty nineteen UDFA. Uh, played a lot of guard, a lot of tackle for them. Uh, Chicago, of course, has the pipeline there with uh, South Bend just being uh, hop, skipping, and jump away from Chi Town. Uh, first career start. Was against Tennessee. He had gotten some work uh, in in injury substitutions uh, at left guard the last couple of weeks. Uh, But he started at the pivot uh, against the Titans, allowed two pressures, and recorded a 36.2 PFF grade. He was the worst qualifying center in week nine. So that's less than ideal. Uh, but like I said, I, I think that if Whitehair does clear COVID, uh, Whitehair will be back at his center spot, and then Bars will be over at left guard. Uh, at the right guard spot, so familiar name, familiar face, Jermaine Effetti, uh, number 74, 6'5", 325, 26 years old, uh, out of Texas A&M. Because remember, he was uh, at, you know Seahawks' first-round pick, number 31 overall in 2016. Uh, just didn't work out. 
Seahawks didn't pick up his fifth year option. Uh, and also, you know, they worked him at tackle and just, eh, just eh, going to work out. Uh, 2020 free agent signee by the Bears. Uh, kicked him inside to guard uh, with Bobby Massey holding things down at right tackle. Uh, started nine games for the Bears, all, all at right guard. 18 pressures, one sack, two penalties allowed, 63.8 PFF grade. Now, uh, you know, besides Leno, who is okay, you know, he's not he's no great shakes, but uh, Afedia has been decent uh, in terms of him kicking inside. Uh, but unfortunately, decent is you know, probably not going to cut it on the rest of this offensive line. Uh, right tackle. So Rashad Coward, that's a real name, uh, 6'5", 320, 26 years old, uh, coming out of Old Dominion, go Monarchs, I think, uh, 2017 UDFA. Now, he came into the league as a defensive end, and then uh, they switched his position. I believe that was in 2018. Uh, he's made 14 career starts. Uh, he made 10 last season at left guard. Uh, then he kicked over to right tackle this year after uh, Bob Massey, as well as uh, reserve Jason Spriggs, uh, went down. So... I mean, this is a guy who four years ago wasn't even playing offensive line, uh, but now he is just getting his first taste of NFL right tackle work. So, yeah, definitely coming after him. Uh, the backups. Uh, so Spriggs and Mustafer, uh did not practice on Thursday, which, remember, would be the equivalent of a normal Wednesday in uh, if they're playing on Sunday, but they're playing on Monday night. So missed their first week's of pra- uh, first day uh, of practice for the week. But Spriggs, 6'6", 301. 26 years old, coming out of Indiana, was a second-round pick by the Packers. Now, I remember I liked him coming into the draft, but stylistically, it wasn't going to match up with what the Vikings want to do up front. Uh, he's much more of a plugger. Uh, it wouldn't really do well in the zone scheme. Uh, did start uh, one game at right tackle for Massey, Week 8 uh, against the Saints. That was the first one that he missed. Uh, and then he ended up with a knee injury, uh, missed last week, and now is on track to miss this week as well. Uh, also, the other backup uh, on the roster who's not on COVID, uh, Sam Mustafer, uh, Notre Dame alum, 2019 UDFA, uh, only had 96 career snaps. Uh, he did start week eight against the Saints, uh, but then had another injury, did not participate on Thursday uh, with said knee injury. Uh, so into the practice squad. So it's important to note these guys because they could be flexed up for game day. Well, I guess game night on uh, Monday. So uh, tackle number 79, uh, Bedara. Uh, Trera, uh, it was a UDFA from LSU. Now this guy is like 6'8", 330, massive. Uh, also the guard, number 62, Eric Cush. He's been around the block for a while, uh, 2013, six-round pick, uh, coming out of California, Pennsylvania. He's been on, well, eight different teams, but he's had nine different stops. This is the second time with the Bears, uh, and if one guy was going to get called up, the veteran it probably makes the most sense. Uh, so you know, keep an eye out for him, uh, as well as they have rookie number sixty guard uh, Dieter Iceland, uh, UDFA out of Yale. So yeah, it's about time they get some brains on this team. Uh, COVID reserve list: they got Cody Whitehair, who was. Uh, on who's put on the COVID list six days ago, uh, did miss the Titans game. He could certainly clear for Monday. Uh, by the time you watch this, he, he may actually even be cleared uh, already. Uh, but he's the center, number 65, uh, 2016 second rounder out of K State. Now, he was initially a left tackle at Kansas State. He came in, kicked inside. Uh, they put him at center. And then, you know, they flip flopped last year with him and James Daniels, uh, who is the great Iowa center coming in as well. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, James Daniels on injured reserve, 23 years old, 2018 second round pick out of Iowa. I really like James Daniels. He would have been uh, a perfect scheme fit here. But, of course, certainly okay with Brian O'Neill, who the Vikings got, you know, a couple picks later. But uh, they had Yankee swap. They had flip flopped them back and forth. I, I think they're both solid players um but uh james daniels is on the injured reserve with a torn pectoral muscle uh, as well as the right tackle bobby massey uh the veteran 31 years old 2012 a uh, fourth round pick by the cardinals came over to the bears uh, last couple years uh now he's on injured reserve with that knee injury so the bears they got a lot of problems so they have a lot of injuries piling up they weren't that great to begin with and frankly all of these young guys involved it's um it's yeah. So talking weak points, you know, Leno, nothing to write home about, but he is their best offensive lineman. But the Vikings have had success against him before uh, attacking that right tackle coward as well uh, with Wanham and Holmes, I, I think will be paramount as well as whoever starts inside, you know, uh, whether it be white hair, whether it be bars, whether it be Hambright, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just attack Armand for Watts, Jaleel Johnson. Maybe this is the James Lynch game. 
who really knows, as well as want him kicking in on third down as well. Plus, you know, third down, giving them you know, the double A gap look, the A-B gap look, like they've been changing things up. Uh, getting Wilson and Kendrick getting their speed on the inside, just causing problems would be great because, I mean, this offensive line, they're big, they're physical, but they're slow. They're not quick. Uh, I think the Vikings can make uh, do a lot of work on them as well. Plus, whoever starts, I mean, the left tackle, left guard, the right guard, right tackle, it's either going to be young guys or new pairings or both, right? So throw a lot of stunts their way, uh, a lot of TNE stunts, see if they process it. Uh, because the Vikings' first two weeks, a lot of the pressures, a lot of the sacks given up were the Vikings offensive linemen who were in new spots, not used to working uh, next to each other. Uh, yeah, Pat Elfline at that right guard spot, Dakota Dozier at that left guard spot. Uh, so they're just getting used to each other. And it was miscommunications on twists, on stunts uh, that really caused a lot of problems. So do that on Monday night. Also, you know, if white hair is out, that's their play caller, so that's going to cause a lot of issues up front. That they'll put a lot more, uh, a lot more on Nick Foles' shoulders. He may be the one calling out protections in that spot. Uh, plus, with Montgomery potentially out with that concussion, I mean, whatever running back they'll use back there uh, won't be used to. Uh, pass blocking with this unit. I mean, Ryan Nall uh, is on the roster. He's played two total pass blocking reps a season. A uh, rookie, Art uh, Artavis Pierce. Uh, has not played this year. Lamar Miller, the veteran, is on the practice squad, but he's relatively new, and Cordero is not a running back. So, I mean, adding everything up, the Vikings defensive line should be able to get some heat, be able to shut down the run game, as well as uh, get after Nick Foles' ass uh, without necessarily having to blitz a lot. Because I, I think the Vikings have been able to do work getting home with four, uh, both against Detroit as well as Green Bay. I think that should continue uh, against Chicago with them being so bereft of talent up front. But, you know, give give respect. Juan Castillo is a good offensive line coach, uh, so we'll see what happens there. Also keep an eye out if uh, Cody Whitehair clears COVID because that will be a big boost for them. But either way, no excuses. Get after it. Let's go, Vikes. Uh, be your thoughts. Uh, a little bit of scouting report on the Bears offensive line. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. We'll support that work. Post on the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value. <laughs>